Hi, I'm uh, Nenshad Bartoliwala. And? I'm the uh, author of Driven to Perform and formerly an executive with SAP. Okay, so Nenshad, what I'm interested in is um, how you see the difference between the um, cloud operators that are uh, presenting at uh, events like Salesforce compared to the more traditional events that we see around the place. So w what are the, the real differences that you're seeing? Uh, I think one of the key things we saw in yesterday's keynote as well as today's is, is the pace of innovation. Um, what we're seeing with Salesforce.com is that uh, with their sales cloud, um, with their service cloud, their custom cloud, and then with the introduction of Chatter, uh, they are able to introduce large pieces of functionality to their customer base in uh, very quick deployment cycles. Um, that is just almost impossible for the on-premise vendors to do. So in six month or one, or, or one year intervals to release major pieces of functionality that they can deploy to their entire install base uh, versus the 12 to 18 month cycles of the on-premise vendors that require an upgrade uh, is a very significant differentiator. So what does that mean in real terms for people who are buying technology um, today and going into the future? I think if I, if I look at the amount of money that customers are spending on uh, the existing on-premise uh, applications that they have versus the amount of money they spend on the cloud, um, they are realizing, they are able to realize value much quicker than they could with the uh, on-premise technologies they have. Uh, because the cloud vendors are able to uh, distribute the cost of the platform across a very, very large uh, economic base, um, you are able to get the economies of scale efficiency passed to the customer. And so you wind up paying a lot less upfront on a very consistent metered basis um, with the cloud offerings. Uh, and you are also able to absorb the innovation much quicker and deploy it to your business. It's fairly obvious to me that startups, um, young companies uh, are going to be immediate targets for this kind of thing. But what about um, what about companies that have been around 20, 30, 50, 100 years? Do you see those making a move into this area anytime soon? And if so, what sort of areas would you suggest? I think what we're seeing in the in the large enterprise space is there has certainly already been consi considerable penetration of uh, human capital management solutions, um, as well as in the CRM area. So I've heard uh, fairly consistently at Salesforce.com of 5,000 user deployments, 10,000 user, uh, user deployments, 12,000, etc. cetera. Um, and I think even uh, flagship marquee customers of the on-premise vendors like Siemens uh, adopting 420,000 seats uh, of, in, of a uh, SaaS vendor suggests that the uh, large enterprise is definitely willing to absorb um, the innovations of the cloud computing model. That being said, I think uh, you find areas like financials. I know an area, uh, Dennis, that you and I both share a keen interest and expertise in, uh, kind of coming up uh, along uh, besides uh, the human capital management and Salesforce areas, and now starting to take hold with vendors like Workday, um, but also others like Intact. Uh, you wrote about financial force earlier, etc. Okay. Your interest obviously is in the, um, the, the the BI area, or tends to be in the BI area. Correct. What sort of impact do you see these kinds of technology having in that? area and what benefits will customers see as we move forward? So in the, in the business intelligence area, you have seen uh, an explosion, uh, especially in the last year in terms of investment uh, in companies who are providing uh, SaaS BI capabilities, uh, companies like Burst, uh, PivotLink, Good Data, Indice, um, which suggests that there's a very, very healthy market for people who are trying to get business intelligence capabilities uh, but have never been able to afford to do so in the small and medium-sized businesses, but then in the larger enterprise uh, without being able to change their deployments. So I know in, in my experience in 10 years in the large enterprise, not, not in SaaS, uh, customers not being able to change the system quickly enough, which for analysis is a very key differentiator, um, having the ability to do that with the SaaS vendors uh, is a key step up, I think, for uh, business intelligence technologies. So it's a very fast moving area. What do you see in the immediate future, say in the next one to three years? For the BI space? Yeah. So I think right now we're seeing a very strong uh, focus on tools. And as you know, Dennis, in most markets, uh, things that start out as tools eventually become packaged and move upstream and become applications. I think we will see in the next one to three years a couple of key marquee applications players in the BI space, 
people who are doing corporate performance management, uh, people who are doing uh, sales performance management or even supply chain performance management, to have real established application vendors for BI applications that can run alongside the Salesforce.coms, run alongside the Workdays and other marquee tier one SaaS platforms. And they would in that sense need to be pretty affordable, I would guess. Yes. As compared to as compared to what we see at the moment with the with the traditional vendors, yeah? Absolutely. So I think I think affordability is, is one of the key areas where there'll be differentiation, but also another uh, is legs and rakes. So I think we're seeing now uh, a fairly high degree of volatility in terms of um, the move to IFRS, people publishing via XBRL, um, other types of standards where people can absorb that and let their vendor take care of that for them instead of them reconfiguring their chart of accounts, them trying to um, map to XBRL taxonomies, etc. Great, thanks very much indeed. Thank you.